Welcome to another Conversation with Professionals series. I, of course, am Terry Watkins, your host, and I'm so appreciative that you're taking the time to be here with High Point Friends School as we have these conversations with experts all around the country, really, talking about different jobs and careers that they have to help inspire your student in terms of where they might want to go for their future. So today we have Dr. Joy War. She's a pediatric dentist right here in High Point. Dr. Joy, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me, Terry. It's Absolutely. great to be here. Absolutely, it's a pleasure. So why don't you help us and help our students know what does being a pediatric dentist entail? Well, being a pediatric dentist entails, first of all, you gotta love people. Because remember, not only do you get to play with the kids, but you have to kind of explain things to the parents. And so one of the big differences between being an adult dentist and a pediatric dentist is that you have to interact with a third party. So you got to kind of be bilingual. You talk baby talk to the babies, but then you have to talk adult talk to the parents so that they can understand. So then you also have to be good with your hands. That's an important part that a lot of people don't think about when they think about dentists. But I have a lot of dental friends who are dentists who draw or they paint, but dentistry is actually very artistic. So if you like to do arts and crafts and things like that, then you may be a good candidate to be a dentist. Interesting. It's probably because you're working in such small spaces. I never would have thought of that. Exactly. Exactly. So Dr. Joy, at what point in your life did you realize that you loved working with children and their teeth? Well, I knew from an early age that I love working with children. It's no wonder that when I was like 11 or 12, all my best friends were kids who were younger than me. And so my house was the house on the block where all the kids came to play and we played outside long time ago. And so we would play hide and go seek or mother may I or all kinds of games and all the kids ended up at my house. Then it turned into me kind of doing a lot of babysitting things. So after I got to be a good babysitter and then church, I did a lot of kid care at church. And then it was like, I knew probably in, in college, I was like, you know, I think I really want to do something that has to do with, with kids. The dentistry part didn't come until after my second year of college, when I figured out, you know, I like science, I love math, and I love things like that. And so medicine was something that was on the table, but I knew that medicine was going to take a lot of my time. So that's how I decided, you know what, maybe dentistry is for me. So you own War PDA or War Pediatric Dental Associates. What made you decide to own your own practice and not just go to work for a larger dental firm? That's a good question. I actually wanted pediatric dentistry to be a lot more um, educational and friendly, not only for the parents, but also for the kids. Typically, many pediatric offices see a lot of kids just because they, um, they're small and you don't have to, you can't do a whole lot of work on them. And so one of the things that I really love about my office is that we personalize in personalization. In other words, I like the fact that if my parents call me, I know who it is, or if my child graduates or something happens, I know who that child is. And so I love the fact that our office is very personal in making sure that we know the patient, which is something that general dentists get to do. But a lot of times pediatric dentists don't get to the, the chance to do that. But that's what I really love about my office. And that is something that definitely sets you apart in the pediatric dental world. Thank if you were to inspire a young person, say somebody who's in middle school has maybe felt the calling to be involved in dentistry at this level, what would you tell them that they should do? I would tell them to make sure that they're interested in science and math. That's something that's really important to dentistry because although 
dentistry is an art. There's a lot of scientific and mathematical things that will help. Like chemistry is an integral part of, of dentistry. Just because not only do you have to know the composition of the compounds that you're using, but you also have to know how to use them in the body. So biochemistry is a really, really big um, area where you wanna make sure that you're good in. Um, math, because it's important that you know the proportions and sizes and shapes and how much of what to use and when to use something. So dentistry is, um, it's, it's calculations. It's also meant to make sure that um, it restores function. And that includes a lot of math and a lot of science. Excellent tip. Thank you for that. Was there any particular schooling or education that you needed to receive in order to do your role as a pediatric dentist effectively? There is. In addition to college or four years of college and dental school, which is an absolute must, I had to do two years of, an, of a residency. And that res residency helped me to concentrate on things that are very special about kids like growth and development. That's a very important part of pediatric dentistry. And also we had to do a lot with special needs kids because most general dentists aren't able to accommodate them. We have to make sure that we're the ones that kind of champion for them. We also had to do a lot with sick children, children who have cancer or children who may have cleft palate or cleft lips or children who may have other um, things going on like cancer. And so it's very important for us to be abreast of all of that. So not only do we know about like how a child grows and how they develop, but also how diseases affect them in particular. So those are special things that we needed, that I needed to do. Interesting. And those are probably really different for children versus what it's like for an adult. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Dr. Joy, what's been your favorite thing about this chosen career path? The kids. I love working with the kids. It is so awesome to see them grow up, to see them every six months come in and they're bigger. And it's awesome to, um, to see them uh, grow into responsible adults or Olympic stars or um, work in the government or do all those wonderful things. And then to look back and say, wow, I actually knew that child when. Um, that's been the best part of, of it all. Just seeing them, knowing their families, watching them grow up, watching them become awesome young men and women and, and just seeing them bring their, pay, bring their kids in. That has been, the greatest compliment that you could ever give a dentist when you start bringing your kids to your old dentist. That's the greatest compliment ever. That's so cool. So fun. I have one last question for you, Dr. Joy. If you were to give one piece of advice to your younger self that would have made your journey a little bit easier, what would mm -hmm. it be and why? It would definitely be to enjoy the journey, to remember that where you are is not your destination, to remember that things are always changing and that even if you're in a bad situation, that things could change overnight. You just never know. And so you just got to keep going. You got to keep being positive and you got to keep believing that everything happens for a reason. Mm, such a great piece of advice for life in general, for sure. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Joy, for taking the time with us today. If our students have any additional questions about what it's like to be a pediatric dentist, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Email me. Absolutely email me. My patients email me all the time. So my email is on my website. You can get it from there. You can contact me by phone. Call me up and I'll be happy to talk with you. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. And I'll make sure to include Dr. Joy's contact information in the banner below this image. And I yes. just want to take a moment to thank all of our viewers, our listeners for tuning into our professional interview series. If this conversation has served you, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button. I know High Point friends would love to continue to share conversations like these with you and your students as they continue to grow. And a little bit about High Point Friends School. We are a private institution located in High Point, North Carolina. We're in the Quaker tradition. So if you're looking for a school that is open year round for preschool, then High Point Friends School might be the solution for you. If you're looking for a school where your student can get involved in sports in fifth grade, High Point Friends School might be the school for you. If you're looking for a school that really focuses on hands-on education and really looks into the social emotional development of the child from the very beginning stages of school and life, then High Point Friends School might be the school for you. And I encourage you to go ahead and check out hpfs.org and get in touch with Pam Horn at the number on the bottom of the screen so that you can get a tour with her and ask all of the questions about what High Point Friends School can do for you and your family. Thanks so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time.